Empiricism, David Hartley, History and Systems of Psychology, Professor Michael Botwin, Department of Psychology, California State University, Fresno. David Hartley was an extreme mechanist in both physiological and psychological processes, which he thought were innately connected. Now, he was the son of a clergyman who explored going into religious orders, but became fascinated with biology. And as you'll see, his philosophy is very tied into the very idea of brain processes and neural processes causing behavior and thinking. Now, this is an interesting point of view. He didn't necessarily get it right, but he presages many other ideas. Hartley's primary laws were associative laws of frequency and contiguity, which we've spent a lot of time talking about already, so you don't need a definition of those. Now, he's primarily known as an associationist, in fact, the first associationist that, at least according to your textbook, gets things together and puts pieces together well. Now, Hartley made the notion that there's no active mind. It's very much an empiricist idea. And he believed that association, or associating sensations and ideas together, is the only way that you can convert simple sensations into ideas and then build them into complex ideas. Now, in his system, all behavior is involuntary and gradually becomes voluntary through learned associations. For those of you that are very interested in behaviorism, you're going to see that he kind of, and to use a word I just used, presages uh, a lot of ideas that are going to become central to behaviorism later on. So, in terms of his associationism, complex ideas are formed automatically. All ideas, in term, are sensations. Now, we receive these sensations through the nervous system, through the peripheral nervous system, into the central nervous system. Remember, he's a doctor. He's looking for kind of a hardwired approach to looking at things. So let's talk about uh, how Hartley thought of nerves, which I find fascinating. Now he disagreed with Rene Descartes that nerves were hollow, and he went along with Newton's notion that nerves were indeed solid. Now what Hartley believed is that nerves being solid would vibrate when stimulated by the senses. Something enters into the sensory neurons, your nerves vibrate. And these vibrations, uh, in terms of your nerves, essentially result in you having some kind of experience. For Hartley, thinking, thoughts, uh, result from the internal stimulation or vibrations of the nerves. So the vibrations start as sensory information moves into the brain, but the brain is still vibrating. In oh, one of my little more snarky moods, I'll talk about to Hartley's notion in terms of old 1950s, 60s rock and roll music, in terms of being all shook up about something. Now, memories, according to Hartley, are simply the continued vibrations that cease after the stimulation has ended. Think about an instrument that is based on vibrations, like a guitar. You pluck a guitar string, or a set of guitar strings, 
they vibrate, making hopefully a pleasant noise. But you don't have to continue stroking the strings on the guitar for them to vibrate. They'll continue to vibrate after they've been stimulated one time. And eventually that will fade and there will be no more vibration of the guitar string. But think of the vibration of a guitar string as very similar to how Hartley thought nerves worked. Now the brain vibrations, uh, he calls them smaller diminutive vibrations, are the very small things that stay on in terms of continual vibrations in the brain. And Hartley thought these were the ideas that correspond to sensations, except they're far weaker. So they're not as vivid to us as having that sensation. So if we think of a strong sensation that has affected us and we feel, as I said earlier, all shook up, if we look at back at that experience a week or two later, it still might affect us and we still might think about it, but the vibrations that are the ideas left over from that sensation are far weaker as they're just in the brain. Now Hartley did not believe in free will. He believed that everything was predestined and these vibrations uh, gave rise to what he called voluntary behavior, although it wasn't totally voluntary. It was simply those kinds of behaviors that we assume we have choice over. So let's start with involuntary behavior. This is what automatically happens in response to some kind of sensory stimulation. So I grab my little magic froggy here and pop his eyes out. He's reacted to the sensation of being squeezed. That was involuntary. Hopefully his eyes will go back. There they go. Back into the socket. That will happen just as kind of a stimulus response type of thing. In fact, Hartley says all voluntary behavior starts as involuntary behavior. If you think about an infant that's newborn, they don't know much. They have very few inborn behaviors. They have things like a rooting reflex, so they'll eat, things like that. But if you've ever played with a young child trying to grasp, been around a young child trying to grasp something, it's kind of like Frankenstein, like moving so... And over time, this involuntary behavior turns into voluntary behavior and we can sweep in and grab little froggy here and make his eyes pop out. So for Hartley, voluntary behavior starts as involuntary behavior and it's simply reflexive type behavior. This is where my behavior students are going to see the links with uh, Watson and Pavlov and Skinner. From these voluntary behaviors, Hartley develops his ideas about associationism. And for him, associationism is simply a response to ideas or stimuli not originally associated with that behavior. So the association is there, the new response is developed and learned. Interesting way of looking at the world. Uh, if it weren't for copyright restrictions, I'd get into a little rendition of the old Beach Boys song, Good Vibrations. But putting the real music on is a copyright restriction. And if I tried to sing it for you, well, 
cause you some bad vibes. In fact, pleasure, according to Hartley, are simply moderate vibrations of the nerves. Think about a nice guitar chord. It isn't extremely loud and obnoxious. It's moderate. It feels good to listen to it. You get a good sensation. If we get literally too shook up and we have extreme vibrations of the nerves, extreme sensations, Hartley says that's going to cause us pain and we're going to in turn try to avoid those extreme sensations that don't feel very pleasant. So Hartley starts us off with these interesting ideas that, again, as a good empiricist, everything is learned, everything comes into the senses, and then goes into the brain. But his way of viewing brain processing fits in with his empiricist views because their brain processes simply are very small, continued vibrations from senses that happened a very long time ago. So, before we get more shook up about this idea, it's time to finish up Hartley and move on. We'll see you next time in the history of psychology. Bye now. This has been a We Have Couches video production, copyright 2020, Professor Michael Botwin, all rights reserved.